So, apart from the diagram, whatever I have discussed, I am writing down step by step here. Starting from multiple lead points, okay, why milestone is having multiple lead points, why aluminum and car, uh, aluminum copper are not having, and coming to the region, the points A, B, C coincidence, okay. All these points I am writing down, you can uh, copy from the board simultaneously with me. So Manoj is uh, asking you to explain the second point once again. So So these are iron atoms. So we are inserting a carbon atom which is very large. Okay. So as we are inserting it with force, so we'll be inserting it. Okay. What we do is like we we take iron to the molten stage, we add carbon to that, so we make it to go uniformly throughout the volume and then we cool it. That's how we generally make mild steel. Okay. So that's why we see iron carbon diagram and from the iron carbon diagram we can understand where we get mild steel. So here as we are solidifying, we are making the uh, we, we are making these uh, in the solid state, these iron atoms will be coming to very near position because the space should be lesser. But we are already inserting these carbon atoms, so there will be interaction between them. So what happens is, so you will be giving rise to this type of phenomena here. Okay, so this to this due to this there will be interactive force between iron and carbon atoms they will be pushing over each other with a huge amount of reaction forces so those reaction forces are already there so you will be achieving upper yield point first that means to cause yielding you have to uh, give rise to high value of stress okay so once you reach upper yield point you are causing starting you are starting the plastic deformation so you will be apply, applying the forces and causing change of volume so that will be giving rise to increase of uh, void space or interstitial volume space the carbon atom will be easily accommodated there so once it reaches or goes beyond upper yield point the volume will be sufficient enough to accommodate that carbon atom so this interactive force will not be present so you'll get or it will be lesser so you'll be getting lesser value of uh, lower yield point or lower yield point is lesser as compared to upper yield point clear Manoj Shindre clear Okay, now listen here. In this, we have observed that uh, fracture is happening after point E where the stress is lesser. So, if you see here in the graph, the highest point is E. So, the highest value of stress the middle can take is given the name as ultimate stress. The stress, is, uh, the stress value at E is given the name as ultimate stress. You can write as a definition. ultimate stress value, the highest value of stress the material can take the highest value of stress the middle can take the highest value of stress the middle can take in conventional stress strain diagram is called as ultimate stress is called as ultimate stress Manoj Chandra here uh, secondary screen is working fine just refresh your page and check okay understood if you are observing so after point E the fracture point is lesser so the reason for that one is we are actually, listen carefully everyone, we are actually drawing the curve between conventional stress and conventional strain. If you remember, at the starting only I said, this is conventional strain and this is conventional stress. So what we are doing is, after upper yield points, though we have lesser area, because in the necking region, the area is very less. 
this area that is a1 is less so a1 less than a0 but still i am substituting the value according to p by a0 which is larger as you are substituting larger denominator you will get lesser value of whole fraction okay so this implies p by a0 is greater than p by a1 that's the reason p by a0 sorry p by a0 is lesser than p by a0 is lesser than p by a1 so you are plotting p by a0 that's why we are getting lesser value here if you are plotting p by a1 definitely you get higher value the fracture is actually happening at higher value only so if you draw the graph strictly draw the graph between true value of stress and strain then you will get like this you can see that as a dotted curve so till this point d where start strain hardening region is being started so wherever you are starting strain hardening region so what happens is there is coincidence between those two curves but after point d is when the strain hardening region is being started so there is deviation so actually you see the ultimate stress in real scenario true ultimate stress is a little bit higher than that value and now the fracture is happening at very higher value there so this is p by a1 this is p by a0 so due to the addition due to the usage of larger area the, you are getting dropping of the curve understood manoj chandra and other people clear i hope there is no confusion regarding this so if anybody ask you why the fracture point value of stress is lesser than the ultimate value of stress you should say that due to the usage of original area in the necking region region so though necking region area is lesser we are getting higher we are getting lesser value of stress roshan i hope you are clear that we are using p by a not right p by a not is conventional stress we are drawing graph between conventional stress and conventional strain so we are supposed to use a not but here in real scenario what's happening here the actual area is a1 a1 is lesser than a not you are substituting larger denominator you are substituting larger denominator so instead of getting p by a1 which is this one here which is larger actually in real scenario true scenario here you are getting lesser value so instead of having higher value instead of having a curve going upside you will be having curve getting downside here okay so if you want i can write down the statement here due to usage of or you can write down like this in conventional stress strain graph original area is used is respect to of instantaneous area understand okay in respect to of instantaneous area okay as a not greater than a1 this implies p by a not is lesser than p by a1 hence in conventional stress strain graph in conventional stress strain graph fracture point is having fracture point is having less stress understood d of sigma you are talking slope yeah obviously see whatever we are getting anyways if you take this conventional curve whatever we are taking is experimental values here okay the behavior we are studying here okay so here we see we are getting a curve which is having negative slope conventional curve but whereas if you take this uh, true curve it's having positive slope and the slope is going on increasing here slope is going on in this way negative slope those things are obvious from the diagram itself done everyone so let's see the last point which we already discussed i'll just write down then we'll go to the next diagram so this last point is about that uh, unloading and loading so in the plastic region if you unload it will go through a line having slope of n smallness only again if you load it it will take the same path but it will get upper yield point it will get higher yield points so you can increase the yield point by doing this repetitive loading in plastic region 
Okay, I'm writing them the same statement. You can copy. So if you are unloading like this, the curve is actually like this. So if you are unloading like this, it will take the same path. Slope is Young's modulus. Okay. If you again load from that strain, it will have higher yield point than earlier. It will have higher yield point than earlier. Clear? So if you take it, so second loading I'm putting with this red color, it goes like this. So yield point. So this is a higher yield point here. Again, here also you'll get a proportional limit, elastic limit and all. And anyways, uh, I said this elastic limit, proportional limit, everything will be very much close to each other. So you will have higher yield point. So you can say you'll be having higher elastic limit also. You'll be having higher yield point and higher proportional limit also. Clear? So this is done. We can see the stress strain curve of uh, brittle material in tension. From this we can understand the huge difference between a ductile material and a brittle material. Okay, so if you take, if you do the same loading for a brittle material, you will have proportional limit, elastic limit and immediately fracture. So there is no concept of plastic deformation in a brittle material. That's what the diagram is showing here. So if you see the stress strain diagram, stress and strain, the curve is like this, proportional limit, elastic limit, yield point, that's all. Sorry, uh, uh, fracture point here. So this is proportional limit, this is uh, elastic limit and it's a fracture point. And here we see the highest value of stress the metal can take is the fracture point. So this is also can be given the name as ultimate stress. Okay. So you will not have plastic region in a brittle material. Let's see the shear stress, shear strain graphs as well. There also you are going to observe this behavior. So. I hope it is done. If you see here, for a ductile material under shear. So if you see the diagram, you have a linear region, elastic region, you have a plastic region where the horizontal line is there, you have a strain hardening region where the peak of the curve is there and immediately fracture happens. The only difference in tension and shear is we had necking in that region, here necking is not there. That's the only difference here. Because necking is a phenomena that can happen or uh, that is possible only in simple tension. So it's not in compression or shear. That's why necking is not there. But here also we see the plastic region is there. Same again, if you see the diagram for brittle material under shear, you will get the same type of diagram. So I can put this as shear stress and this is shear strain. So you'll have fracture directly. So we observe that from these four curves that this uh, particular Ductile materials will have plastic region, but brittle materials will not have plastic region. Understand? Majo, uh, Manoj is asking the question that for brittle material, elastic limit exists. Absolutely. This is a very, very important point. You are catching all these important things. Elastic limit will exist. Elastic deformations will exist for both ductile and brittle. So we are coming to the main point here. Please remove from your mind that elastic metal means, ductile material means it should be elastic. A brittle material means it should not be elastic. There is nothing like that. Every material we have seen the four curves. In all the four curves, there was elastic limit and elastic region. So you should understand that every material on earth is elastic in nature. Clear Manoj and other people. Every material, as every material is having elastic region, so every material is elastic in nature. But ductile materials have plastic region, but brittle materials cannot have plastic region. So the clear distinction between ductile materials and brittle materials is the capability of plastic deformation. If a metal can show, if a metal can show plastic deformation before fracture, then that is called as ductile material. If the metal cannot show plastic deformation before fracture, if after immediately the elastic region, it is immediately breaking means we call it as brittle material. Understood? Clear? I hope you guys have copied those uh, diagrams. I'm writing down the statements here. So we see every material is having Elastic region. Hence, every material is 
tail or brittle will be elastic but only ductile materials but only ductile materials can undergo plastic deformation and brittle materials cannot what about ink smallness in brittle materials ink smallness decides the value of elastic strain or elastic linear strain for some normal stress that means whether when you apply simple tension or simple compression what should be the corresponding strain is decided by ink modulus okay so every metal will have its own value of ink modulus and every metal is elastic in nature so it doesn't matter that ductile metals will have ink modulus brittle metals will not have ink modulus understand so you can remove that confusion so the only difference between ductile and brittle materials is plastic deformation thing ductile materials can undergo plastic deformation and brittle materials can not undergo plastic deformation understood so this is how we differentiate between a ductile material and a brittle material listen carefully for example you would you you, you are running a company which uh, produces uh, packaging uh, uh, cartoons or packaging things for uh, uh, some swiggy orders etc okay i'll put it like this if you order some uh, food by swiggy most probably there is a chance that you will be observing some aluminum foil is there so aluminum foils are very much famous in using for uh, packaging food items Okay, so generally for rotis also they use aluminium to uh, aluminium to uh, wrap them up. Okay, so that aluminium foil, very small foil or aluminium paper, is actually produced from a big billet, very big billet. Maybe the billet which is of my, some high or uh, some height of uh, some thickness of my height. So from that big billet, they do rolling operation successively at many stages to produce that much small paper thickness. Uh, that much small aluminium foil of thickness of around paper or having thickness uh, of a paper okay so we are doing plastic deformation permanently changing its dimensions so it is possible only for ductile material so we are using aluminium okay so we can't expect the same thing to happen using cast iron cast iron is a brittle material cast iron is a brittle material so we can't expect to have cast iron fiber so cast iron uh, foil in the same way we can't have glass foil or glass paper because glass is a brittle material understood so you should understand that every metal is elastic in nature but only it is either ductile or brittle so if it is ductile means it will be experiencing plastic deformation it can experience plastic deformation before fracture whether it is, if it is a brittle material it cannot show any plastic deformation before fracture understood clear that's the biggest difference between ductile and brittle okay so i'll put this very famous question many people might be having answer regarding this what do you think about rubber can you say rubber as elastic material rubber is a elastic material yes or no okay listen just now i given the statement every material is having elastic region so every material whether it is ductile or brittle it is respect of that it is elastic material so rubber is an elastic material you take cement i mean concrete beam it's also elastic in nature only thing is the amount of elastic deformation will be different so you can take natural rubber it will be very very elastic Okay, it, because it can show good amount of elastic deformation because its ink smallness is a little bit less. But wherever you have higher ink smallness, you'll be having lesser value of uh, elastic strains. We'll come to that one in the second part of the chapter. So the answer that every material is elastic, you should be keeping in mind. Understood? Agreeing with me that rubber is elastic material? Yes or no? I just repeated the same statement by giving an example. So every material on earth is elastic in nature. So rubber is also elastic in nature. Fun? now listen here what do you think about ductile or brittle i mean i'm asking whether ductile uh, this uh, rubber is elastic uh, rubber is ductile material or brittle material tell me rubber is ductile material or brittle material rubber is ductile or brittle what do you think or you can try to give the answer by doing experiment on your eraser if you have some obstacle eraser or any a little bit decent eraser anyways you can assume that to be rubber uh, rubber only so whether it is ductile or brittle 
If you try to take Apsara Elasin and try to elongate that, it will undergo elastic deformation and all of a sudden it will undergo fracture. There will be no plastic deformation. So rubber is elastic material but brittle. Very good. So Sanjay and Manoj got the correct answer here. Understood? So please keep in mind, you can write down your own words. Example, rubber is an elastic material but it is a brittle material. Understood? And I mean for uh, natural rubber, please listen carefully here. So everywhere it's written simply as rubber but strictly speaking natural rubber. So write down the point like this after this. So natural rubber because uh, the uh, the rubber which we use in our uh, tires etc are mostly synthetic rubber. Synthetic rubber again comes under the category of ductile. So I don't want to give that statement uh, to confuse you people here. So natural rubber is brittle in nature. Okay. So I'm writing down here. You can copy. So natural rubber is elastic and brittle. No plastic deformation. Okay. So we use synthetic rubber in our industrial or various applications. So synthetic rubber is ductile. I'm not putting the statement because uh, that should not give any confusion. Okay. Kindly observe the picture on the secondary screen. There is left, that means there's a picture of two bolts. One bolt is uh, of undeformed uh, position, undeformed condition. And second bolt has undergone some yielding or some plastic deformation. You can see a diameter got decreased at some portion of the length. Okay. Do you think we can use such type of deformed bolt? Think and tell. Do you think, do you guys think we use or we can use or anywhere you have observed, we use such type of deformed bolt? We don't use it, right? So please keep in mind that we don't use ductile materials that means once produced after produ after production during the production during manufacturing process we cause plastic deformation by rolling forging etc it doesn't matter once it comes as a workpiece as a bolt as a rod as a shaft etc so in working conditions if you experience yielding means we don't use that particular ductile material kindly keep in mind so the second picture shows a fractured bolt and it's very obvious that we don't use such type of fractured bolt. It's not a pencil where we can uh, uh, use the half pencil though it is broken. Understand? So in your childhood, you might have used a broken pencil by mistake if it is broken. But we don't use such type of bolts. Okay. So what I said was, yeah, whatever you are saying is absolutely true. That if you cause yielding and uh, if you unload it, again, if you apply the load, it will be having upper yield point. Okay. That's upper. That's very, very good. Uh, Upper yield point means higher yield point there. It's very, very good. But we use that thing, we use that behavior or we use that uh, property uh, only at the time of manufacturing. In real life scenario, what happens is you will have higher yield points. Okay. Once necking happens, you'll be having higher yield point. But actually what happens is if you take this uh, diagram where di uh, area got a little bit decreased. So the bolt has decreased its area a little bit here. In real scenario, what happens is, as we are starting with the element where area is lesser here, we are having area is lesser here, okay? So you are going to have higher value of stress than the nominal value. So if you take stress here, sigma 1, here you take stress here, sigma 2, sigma 2 will be greater than sigma 1. So here, stress is going to be higher due to the lesser area available or due to this abrupt change of area of cross-section in the middle. So, which we call it as stress concentration. So, in real life scenario, you will have the concepts of stress, con you will have the limitations of stress concentration, etc., which we don't consider in the subject of SOM. Okay? So, in applications, the stress concentration is going to be very, 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 very problematic. That's the reason why we study and we uh, we study about that concept in a very detailed way in the subject of machine design. So, if you haven't gone through the subject of machine design, in the future, we're gonna, I'm going to teach that. So, we're going to go through the machine design concept in that particular uh, lecture. Okay. So in manufacturing operation, we are not concerned about stress concentration. Anyways, we would like to deform that. I would like to use some, uh, uh, let's take it as some, uh, let's take it as some rectangular rod. I would like to use this rectangular rod and I would like to deform it to produce a, deform it to produce a cylindrical rod. So what I will do, I will do the plastic deformation. It should be made up of ductile material. So I will do rolling operation or I should, I should do, I will do some forging operation, etc. And I will cause 
that deformation here. So in this case, once it is deformed into this thing, we have caused yielding, so that will be helpful for us. Okay, but in this case, in application purpose, stress concentration will be coming up and which will cause a huge amount of problem. So at this stage, imagining stress concentration phenomena will be a little bit difficult, but just keep in mind for the time being that stress concentration phenomena will not be allowing us to use a ductile material which has already undergone plastic deformation at the time of normal loading. Okay, so we have just now understood that if we don't use a ductile material once it undergoes yielding and we don't use brittle material once it undergoes fracture. Okay, understood? Just keep in mind here. Failure. So, definition of failure is given like this. You can copy from the secondary screen. Then afterwards, I will explain that. Kindly copy that and give a one, uh, one shot of reading. Okay, so failure means if the machine element or component is unable to satisfy its function properly, we say it got failed. For example, you have fan in your room. So, fan is supposed to rotate at some particular RPM according to the speed you have kept there and uh, it should be circulate in the air, right? But if it is not rotating at that speed due to some problem in the bearing or some problem, so then we say the fan got failed. In the same way, in mechanical applications or civil structural applications also, wherever the component is not serving its purpose, we say it got failed. For example, a shaft is there, it is used for power transmission, gear is there for power transmission. So due to some problem in the gear too, it is not transmitting the power smoothly. It is causing some problem. It is giving rise to loss of power. We say the gear got failed. Okay, if you have a key, key is required to join two elements, rotatory elements, for example, shaft with a gear. So if the key got broken, then the shaft and the gear will not be joined in a perfect way. So we say key got failed. Understood? Clear? So just now we understood that, or just now we have realized from the previous pictures that we don't use ductile materials once they got yielding and we don't use brittle materials once they got fracture or once they experience fracture. So, failure of a ductile material happens by yielding, failure of a brittle material happens by fracture. You can write down the statements. Below that statement, you can copy the statement here. So, failure So, failure of a ductile materials happens by yielding and failure of a brittle material happens by fracture. Okay? If it's over, we'll go with the strength of the material definition. Other two diagrams? I kept the same diagrams of bolt and uh, the fracture. You guys want to copy other two diagrams as well? Haven't done? If you haven't done, you can copy. So, you done with the first diagram. This is the second diagram. If you guys haven't copied those remaining three diagrams, second, third and fourth, you can copy. So, this is the second diagram, stress strain curve of a brittle material in tension. Yes. Same as that of normal means, like slope of the curve, everything will be different, but they are similar. Because both will fracture at the ultimate point or the last point itself. Okay, so but the slopes will be different. We'll discuss them in the second part of the chapter. When we discuss about uh, elastic constants and their relationship. Previous slide. Okay. So put the side heading strength of the material. So strength of the material. Listen carefully everyone. Generally in our day-to-day -day life or uh, real life applications, day-to-day -day life phenomena, we have a tendency of telling strength as load carrying capacity. So please remember that in our SOM subject or any mechanical or structural concepts, we deal or we, we take strength as stress or in terms of stress. So strength definition is stress the material can take up to failure. Understand? Stress the material can take up to failure. And we know failure occurs in ductile material because of yielding and failure occurs in brittle material because of fracture, right? So stress the metal can take up to yielding is called as uh, strength of a ductile material. Stress the metal can take up to fracture is called as strength of a brittle material. Okay? Definition. Okay? Make it fast. Strain in percentage strain. Though it is very 
small concept it's very critical and very useful uh, so i mean very important because we got a question gate on 16 paper which we going to discuss in ninth chapter which is simply based upon that there's a huge difference between strain and percentage strain if you take them as same then you'll get wrong answer so basically strain can be given by this formula here change in length by original length percentage strain is equal to given by change in length by original length into 100 so percentage strain is equal to strain into 100 or you can write down strain is equal to percentage strain by 100 so you're going to use these two equations wherever you would like to convert strain from percentage strain or uh, percentage strain to normal strain understood Okay, so you guys take this question. It's an easy question only. You guys can do it as a homework. We'll discuss the solution in the next class. So take screenshot of this one also. So as we don't have time, we'll discuss the solution in the next class.